Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to talk about how to start investing in the stock market. Okay, I hope that I can show you a kind of a step by step as to how I started and also so show you some ways that I conduct my research. Okay, now uh, let's not waste any time. We have a lot to cover. Um, in order to buy, start buying stocks in the exchange, you need a trading platform. Okay, so what I did here was I googled discount brokerage. Okay, that's what they're called. So I found a pretty good article. Uh, it gives me the best brokerages as uh, of last year. Okay, um, I'll put all the links. I'll put all the links into the description. Um, so you see some of these accounts. There's Ally Invest. Uh, they charge a four ninety five commission fee. There's zero account minimum. So this is a great account for a lot of beginners who don't have a lot of money to start with. Uh, you can open an Ally account. Okay. There's also D uh, T D Ameritrade. There, as you can see, their fees are a little bit higher, six ninety five, zero account minimum. So that sounds pretty good as well. Uh, I personally love Fidelity. I love their trading platform. They have a very high tech technical platform that gives you a lot of great information and just gives you a lot of tools to do your research. Um, but I'm looking at this account and it seems like there's a 2.5 grand account minimum to open an account with them. However, it, um, if you want to do like a retirement account with them, they also have a free um, zero minimum account. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, zero minimum retirement accounts. So you don't necessarily have to have the 2.5 grand. You can just go ahead and open up a retirement account and you can still do all your researching through their platform. Okay, there's also uh, Charles Schwab's 495, one grand account minimum. Okay, um, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this Robinhood. It's supposed to be like the zero commission, zero minimum um, uh, platform on your phone. So you might want to look into that. Again, these are all different options. Um, you know, it's just a matter of you finding the one that you like. Uh, I personally like the more technical ones like Fidelity. Uh, I originally started with Dali, um, but it used to be called Trade King. And since then, I just kind of been using their platform to do my research. All right. So, um, so now that we know where to start, okay, I have my trading account here open. So let's say I'm a beginner and I don't really know what to start. I don't know what should I invest. There's so many companies out there um, and I know nothing about. So what you can do is you can go to Yahoo Finance, okay? What I did here was I, I went to Yahoo Finance. So if I could go to Google, okay, you're going to search uh, Yahoo Finance. And this is a great um, page because it allows you to do a lot of research on a lot of different things, okay? Um, now, what, what I like about this website is that it, if you kind of play around with it, you'll find that you'll see a lot of good information. But let's go here to My Screeners, okay? My Screeners is pretty cool because it's going to give you the option to create a screen okay on what you want to invest so for example you can do a, an equity screener uh, just in case you don't know equity is basically the same thing as a stock okay you can do mutual fund screeners and you can do ETF screener now ETFs they are called exchange traded funds this is honestly the best thing that an, a beginning investor can do because it offers instant diversity. Now, take that with the, uh, with the green assault. Make sure you do your own research before you do any type of investing, okay? So let's go ahead and click an ETF screener, all right? And we should get some options here. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and add the New York Stock Ex Exchange on the right here, okay? Um, let's see what this category name has to offer. Okay, so this is gonna offer you uh, just different types of ETFs, okay? You have um, emerging markets, you have equity energies. Uh, honestly, there's just a lot of different options here, okay? But we're not gonna go too far, too deep into these. Let's just go ahead and see what happens if we click the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, what sort of family fund is this? Okay, let's see. Morning stars perform rate. Let's go in and see anything between four stars and let's see what comes up with five stars. Again, you want the, more, the best performing ETFs if you're gonna be investing in ETFs, okay? So now, let's go ahead and click find ETFs and we should get the best performing ETFs uh, within these exchanges. So it's just loading here. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got here. These are all different ETFs that you can look at, okay? Um, now, what I don't like about Yahoo Finance is it's, I haven't had much experience with it. Um, I haven't found a way to get a 10-year track record of this. Now, usually you can do that with your trading accounts. However, depending on the account that you have, some platforms may not offer those uh, that intensive tools for you to do the research. But if you have like Fidelity, uh, you can really look back at the 10-year track record of all these ETFs. 
Okay, so now, all right, we're looking at an ETF. Let's see what this iShares S&P Small Cap 500 Growth ETF looks like. So let's click on that, all right? And we should get a better idea of what's in these ETFs. Now, you have the option. Uh, if you wanna keep things simple and you're not too familiar with how to you know, do the research when you're looking at individual companies, ETFs is a fine option because again, you don't have to do the intense research. Just look at the 10 year track record of how this uh, company has been performing. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna click here uh, where it says performance, okay? Uh, now, now again, I'm not saying you should invest in this ETF, but this is just an example how uh, of the type of information you wanna look at when you're researching these ETFs. Okay, so I clicked on performance, all right? It's gonna show me here, okay. Uh, it's gonna show me the year to date, YTD. That's how much uh, this ETF has gained this year, 15%. That's pretty good, all right? Uh, so let's get more of a longer view. So the 10 year track, track record for this ETF is 10%. So if you go back 10 years, even, if, even with the financial crash, if you would have invested in this ETF, you would still be averaging 10% annually. So that's what you want to look at is you want to see that these ETFs are performing well, uh, even when the market is up, when the market is down, you want to make sure that the ETF you're going to invest in, okay, it uh, still gives you an overall uh, profit throughout the, the, the ups and downs of the stock market. All right, so that's basically an ETF, okay, again, these are exchange traded funds. Uh, they're basically very similar to mutual funds. I personally am not a fan of, of mutual funds because they're more expensive to hold. And the reason why is because they're fund they're they're managed by these fund managers uh, who are actively trading these uh, the or actively managing these portfolios and they're charging you a higher expense ratio at the end of the year and it's taken away from your portfolio gains. So I like I personally love ETFs. Um, it's it's a passive investment. You know they track the stock market. You can track the S and P five hundred. Um, just go ahead and search. S&P 500 ETF, and it'll give you a whole list of all these ETFs that track that index, okay? But let's say you want to do uh, more individual companies, okay? So uh, let's go to the S&P 500. If you scroll to the top here, S&P 500, all right? Um, we should be able to figure out what companies are in the S&P 500. Um, and, okay, here we go. So we have the S&P 500, all right? If you can't find the information here, you know, honestly, um, just go to Google. And we can search um, companies in the S&P 500. And we should be able to get the list of all the companies. Oh, look at that, Wikipedia. All right, um, so let's go ahead and click on that. All right, let's just get some ideas of some of the stocks that are in this index. And just so you know, the S&P 500 is basically the largest 500 companies in the United States. Um, so it, it's it's basically with the U.S. market, and historically, uh, this index has delivered a, a, an average return of 10% annually since the beginning, since the early 1900s. So I mean, we you know, there's no guarantee that what happened in the past will happen in the future, but the fact that this index has so much history and so much financial data, it gives us more information for us to make a more educated decision on our investments. All right, so now that we're here, let's go ahead and look at some of these pages, all right? Um, you know, let's just scroll down until we see one that we is that we see that is familiar to us. Uh, again, you know, these are all companies that you can search on your own. Okay, so let's say we do something like, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Uh, all right, let's do at and all right? So the little symbol here on the left side where I have my arrow pointing, that's the symbol that's the stock symbol okay so if you want to do individual stock research on a stock you're going to go back to your trading your your, your trading platform okay uh so i'm going to go back to my alley platform here okay and i'm going to search uh at t so i'm going to enter the 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 stock symbol and there you go i have at t okay so now for all you beginners now we're going individual uh stock research so i'm here on at and t's page okay there's a lot of things you want to look at. Now, um, I highly recommend, I highly recommend that if you're going to be doing individual uh, investing in individual companies, that you read The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham, okay? You need to read that book before you start inv investing in individual companies, okay? Uh, and the reason is because now you're starting to invest in one individual stock. So that, 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 that basically goes into, okay, 
you're going to put more money into this company, okay? And that's it. You're putting all your eggs in, in, in this basket. So uh, I highly encourage you guys to read Intelligent Investor. It's going to give you guys all the, the, the tools that you need and all the knowledge that you need to start uh, researching these companies. Now, uh, okay, so there's going to be a lot of things you want to look at here. You want to look at the dividends. Um, you want to look at the size of the company, market capitalization, uh, what, what sector or what industry is this company in, okay? Is that an, an industry that you want to invest in? All right. Now, the price earnings on, on the bottom right here, uh, that's basically showing you what this price, what this stock is currently priced at. Now, typically, the higher the price earnings, OK, the more expensive this stock it is in terms of value. OK, so I'm not telling you to invest in a stock that says that has a high P.E. ratio or a low ratio. That's up to you. That's up to your investment philosophy as you start to de develop throughout the years. But I'm just letting you know that the higher the, the P ratio, the more expensive this stock is currently selling. Now, also vice versa, if the P ratio is at 18, maybe a little bit below 15 or 12, then it's it's fairly priced. It's it's not overpriced. It's you know it's decently priced for what the stock is currently valued. Okay. Now you also want to look at okay, is this company profiting? You we want to look at the profit margins. Okay, it might be a good idea that you take an accounting course so that you understand all these accounting terms. Go into fundamentals, okay? You'll find out some more uh, valuations on the company, uh, P ratio, price to book, uh, sales, net profit margins, okay? What's the uh, financial strength of this company? Look into the debt, all right? Now, if you want to go into more uh, in-depth research, you can go into financials, okay? This will take you to a four-year uh, track record of their financial statements. Uh, and again, you have access to their income statement, you have access to the balance sheet, and you also have access to the cash flow statement on this side, okay? Now, um, if you want to do more in-depth research, usually they will post some sort of financial statements on your platform. For you. So you should be able to find their financial uh, statements um, from their stock page. But if you can't, I believe you can just go to sec.gov. I'll post the link in the description. And you can always look up any company's uh, quarterly financials or annually financials. Um, from history to analyze whether this is a company you want to invest to. But I'm not going to get into that. That's up to you. You got to do your own homework. Um, so anyways, let's move on. Uh, I want to also share with you guys a website that um, you can compare a lot of these companies and how they're doing. Okay. So for example, if we take this company AT&T uh, or we get the stock symbol T, we're going to go ahead and go over to this website here that I entered. Uh, it's called readers.com. Okay. Now you can enter the stock symbol here in the search in the search bar and um so let me just post that actually let me let me type in at&t okay at&t and it should give us some information about this company um all right here we go just loading all right so there we go we have at&t we're going to click on that all right and that this should give us some pretty good information uh, in terms of uh the stock here so let's see let's scroll down for a bit um this this website gives you uh, the comparisons, uh, key developments, financials, research. Um, let's see here. Um, okay, I'm not I'm not seeing it, but let's see what happens if I click um, key developments. It should give me some sort of. Well, um, I guess I, I it's been a while since I've been on this website, but. Anyways, you should be able to get some comparisons um, on this website. So check it out. It's called Reuters.com, R-E-U-T-E-R-S.com. Okay, and just uh, there's some more research things that you can utilize this website with. Okay, so anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Now, when you're, when, you know, let's say you've done your research and you're ready to buy, you're just going to go back to your trading platform. All right, and then you're going to start, you're going to enter in your stock symbol here, just like that. Uh, all right, since, since we're here, we don't need to do that. So let's go ahead and say, okay, we want to buy this company. So we're going to hit buy. All right. And again, it's going to take us to the uh, transaction page. All right. Enter in the amount of shares that you want to buy in. Okay. I want to buy three shares. And if the market is currently open, then you can go ahead and click markets uh, on your price uh, column here. And then you're going to go ahead and hit preview. Now, after you hit preview, you're going to get some sort of confirmation or kind of a preview sheet. I, I don't have any uh, funds in this current account, so it's not going to let me 
uh, process the transaction. So that's pretty much how you uh, buy a stock. And you can honestly buy an ETF the same way. So let's say, for example, I want to buy an ETF. Okay. I'm going to do the same way. So let's say I want to buy an S&P 500 ETF. I'm going to go to IVV. It's one of the ETFs that tracks the S&P 500 index. Okay. Uh, I can literally buy the ETF the same way that I buy a stock. Again, the, the ETF is basically, it's called an exchange traded fund and it holds a diversified uh, portfolio of stocks. So you get instant diversity. So uh, for beginners, I highly recommend that you look into ETFs as you start to develop your your invest investing skills. And I highly recommend that you read Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Okay. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. And let me know if you guys have any questions regarding any of the topics that we discussed. And I'm looking forward to making more videos on how to invest in the stock market. So thank you. Uh, if you liked this video, please give me a like. And um, again, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're into the investing. Thanks and have a great day.